Well, welcome back to part four of uh, Gentleman the King, a short story by Damon Runyon. If you remember yesterday, um, the three guys that have been asked to get rid of the king are most surprised to find that the king in question is not an old man, but somebody who's very much younger, and in fact a child, a small child. And this is what happens. Who are you? The little kid says again. We're Americans, I say, very proud to mention my home country. We're from Philly and Chicago, two very good towns at that. Well, the little kid's eyes get bigger than ever, and he climbs right out of bed and walks over to us, looking very cute in his blue silk pajamas and his bare feet. Chicago, he says. Do you know Mr. Capone? Al, says Jojo. Do I know Al? Why? Al and me are just like this, he says. Although personally I do not believe Al Capone would know Jojo if he meets him in a broad daylight. Where do you know Al from, he asks. Oh, I, I don't know him, the kid says. But I read about him in the magazines and about the machine guns and the pineapples. Do you know about the pineapples, he says. Do I know about the pineapples? Jojo says, as if his feelings are hurt by this question. He asks me, do I know about the pineapples? Why? Look here. And what does Jojo do? But out with this little round gadget, which I recognize at once as a bomb, such as these guineas like the Chucker people. They do not like especially guineas from Chicago. Of course, I never know Jojo is packing this article around and about with him, and Jojo can see that I'm much astonished, and by no means pleased. Because he said something like this. I bring this alone in case of a bear fight. They are very handy in a bear fight. Well, the next thing. Anybody knows we're all talking about this and that and very pleasant, especially the little kid and Jojo who is telling lies faster than a horse can trot about Chicago and Mr. Capone, and I hope and trust that I'll never hear some of the lies Jojo tells. Or he may to hold it against me for... Being with Jojo when these lies come off. <coughs> I'm talking to the doll whose name seems to be Miss Peabody, but who is not so hard to take at that. And at that time, I'm keeping an eye on Izzy Cheesecake, who is wandering around the room looking things over. The chances are Izzy is trying to find a few of the valuable jewels which, as I mentioned to him, when talking about them and getting rid of the king. In fact, and thinking a stray peaked here and there myself, but I do not see anything worthwhile. Then, Miss Peabody is explaining to me about the politics of the country, and it seems the reason the Grand Duke wishes to get rid of the little kid, king, and be king himself is because he has a business deal on which a big nation nearby which wishes to <coughs> control the king, king's country. I judge from what Miss Peabody tells me that this country is no bigger than Delaware County, PA. And it seems to me a lot of butter about no more country than this, but Miss Peabody says it's a very nice little country at that. She says it will be very lovely indeed if it's not for the Grand Duke Gino, because the little kid king stands okay with, with the people. But it seems the old Grand Duke is uh, pretty much a boss of everything. And Miss Peabody, Peabody says... She's personally long afraid that he will finally try to do something very drastic indeed to get rid of the kid king. On account of the kid seeming so healthy. Well, naturally, I do not state to her that our middle name is drastic because I do not wish Miss Peabody to have a bad opinion of us. <clears throat> now, nothing will do but Jojo must show this kid his automatic, which is as long as your arm, and maybe longer. And the kid is greatly delighted and takes the rod and starts pointing it here and there and saying boom, boom, as the kids will do. But what happens? But he pulls the trigger and it seems that Jojo does not have the safety on. <coughs> so the rascal really goes boom, boom twice before the kid can take his finger off the trigger. While well, the first shot smashes a big jar in one corner of the room, which Miss Peabody afterwards tells me is worth 15 G's if it's worth a dime. And the second slug knocks off Izzy Cheesecake's dubby hat. What serves Izzy right at that? And as he seems to be taking his hat 
on one the presence of a lady. Naturally, I, these shots are very disturbing to me at the moment, but afterwards I learned that they are a very good thing indeed, because it seemed a lot of guys were hanging around outside, including Baron von Thorpe and several prominent politicians of the country, watching and listening to see what comes off. Hurry right home to bed, figuring the king has got rid of, as, a per, as per contract, and wishing to be found in bed if anybody comes around asking questions. Well, Jojo is finally out of lies about Chicago and Mr. Capone, when the little kid seems to get a new idea and goes rummaging around the room looking for something. And just as I am hoping he's about to donate the valuable jewels to us, he comes up with a box of what is in this box, but a baseball bat and a catcher's mitt and a baseball. And it is very strange indeed to find such home-like articles so far away from home, especially as Babe Ruth's name is on the bat. Do you know about these things? Little kid asked Jojo. They're from America, and they are sent to me by one of, um, of your people when he is visiting there. But nobody here seems to know what they're for. Do I know about them? Jojo says fondling them very tenderly indeed. He asked me, do I know about them? Why, in my time, I'm the greatest hitter of the West Side Blues back in dear old Jai. Well, now nothing will do but the kids, but we must show him how these baseball articles work. So is he Cheesecake who claims he is once a star backstopper with the Vine Streets back in Philly? puts on a pad and mask, and Joe takes the bat and lays a small sofa pillow down on the floor for home play, and insists that I pitch to him. Now it is years since I handled a baseball, although I wish to say that in my day I am very good as an amateur pitcher, as there is around Gray's Ferry in Philly, and the chances are I will be with the A's if I do not have other things to do. So, I take off my coat and get down to the far end of the room while John John squares away at the plate with Dizzy Cheesecake behind it. <coughs> I can see by the way he stands that Jojo is bound to be a sucker for a quiv. And so I take a good wind up and cut loose with the old fadeaway. But of course my arm is not what it used to be. And the ball does not break as I expect. So what happens? But Jojo belts the old apple right out through the high window in what will be right field if this room is laid out like Shy Park. Well, Jojo starts running as if he's going to fist, but of course there's no place in particular for him to run, and he almost knocks his brains out against the wall, and the ball is lost, and the game winds up right there. But the little kid is tickled silly over this business, and even Miss Peabody laughs, and she does not look so to me like a doll who gets many laughs out of life for that. It is now nearly 10 o'clock, and Miss Peabody says if she can find anybody around, she would give us something to eat. Well, this sounds very reasonable. So I step outside the door and bring in the guy we tie up there, who seems to be wide awake by now, very much surprised and quite indignant. And Miss Peabody says something to him in a language which I do not understand. When I come to think of it all over, I'm greatly astonished the way I trust Miss Peabody because there is no reason why she shall not tell the guy to get the law. But I suppose I trust her because she seems to have an honest face. Anyways, the guy in the uniform goes away rubbing his noggin and pretty soon in comes another guy who seems to be a butler or some such and who is also greatly surprised at seeing us. And Miss Peabody rattles off something to him and he stares and starts hustling in tables and dishes and sandwiches and coffee and one thing and another in no time at all. Well, there we are. The five of us sitting round the table, eating and drinking, because what does the butler do but bring in a couple of bottles of good old pre war champagne, which is very pleasant to the taste. Although oh, Izzy Cheesecake it embarrasses me by no little, by telling Miss Peabody that if she can dig up any considerable quantity of this stuff, and he will make her plenty of bobs by peddling it in our country. And will also cut the king in. 
So when the butler fills the wine glass, it's a fourth time. Miss Peabody picks up hers and looks at us. And naturally, she has a sense of enough to pick ours up too. And then she stands up on her feet, raises her glass above her head and says like this, Gentlemen, the king. Well, I stand up at this and Jojo and Izzy Cheesecake stand up with me and we say all together, the king. And then we swig our champagne and sit down again and the kid laughs all over and claps his hands and seems to think it is plenty of fun, which it is. At that, although Miss Peabody does not let him have any wine and it's somewhat indignant when she catches Jojo trying to slip him a snort under the table. Well, finally, the kid does not wish us to leave him at all, especially Daljo. But Miss Peabody says he must get some sleep, so we tell him we will go back someday. And we take our hats and say goodbye, and leave him standing in the bedroom door with Miss Peabody at his side, and the little kid's arm is around her waist, and I find myself wishing it is my arm at that. Of course, we never go back again. In fact, we get out of the country that very night and take the fine boat out of the first seaport we hit and return to the United States of America. And the gladdest guy in all the world to see us his ugly face because he has to drive us about a thousand miles with a muzzle of rod digging into his ribs. So, Kitty Quick says, now you know why we go to Europe. Well, naturally, I'm greatly interested in his story, and especially in uh, what Kitty says about the pre-war champagne, because I can see that there may be great business opportunities in such a place if a guy can get into the right people. But one thing Kitty will never tell me is where the country is located, except that it is located in Europe. You see, Kitty says, we are all strong Republicans here in Philly and I will not get the Republican administration of this country tangled up in such an international squabble for the world. You see, when we land back home, I find a little item of cable news in the paper which says Grand Old Duke Dino dies as a result of injuries received in an accident in his home some weeks before. And I'm never sure but what these injuries may be caused by Jojo insisting on ugly face driving us around to see Grand Duke's house the night we leave and popping his pineapple into the Grand Duke's bedroom window. There we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry the last chapter is a bit long, but last bit. Um, I had to finish it today, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. See what I mean. Back again soon with another story. If you like it, thumbs up, please. And thank you for everybody that is watching now. Tell your friends. Hopefully they'll enjoy it as well. See you soon. Bye-bye. God bless.